ரணரங்கதீரம் ராஜீவனேத்ரம் ரகுவம்சநாதம் காருண்யூப்பம் கருணாகரம் தம் ஸ்ரீராமச்சந்திரம் ஷரணம் பிரபாதேராமச்சந்திரம் ஷரணம் பிரபாதேராமச்சந்திர பகவான் கீ ஜய சீதா மாதா கீ ஜய जगत गुरु श्रील प्रोपाद की जाए इसकोन वर्तमान गुरु वृंद की जाए हिज होली ने जय पता का स्वामी गुरु महाराज की जाए हरे कृष्णा माय हम्बल ओबी सेंसेस टू ऑल दी डिवोटीज एट सेंट्रल न्यू जर्सी थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू योर संगा सो आई होप यू ऑल हैड अ ग्रेट रामनवमी सेलिब्रेशंस हियर एट इसकोन विशाखापट्टनम वी हैड wonderful wonderful celebrations of shri ram navami usually here in south india on the day of um, ram navami uh, we have uh, sita ram kalyanam we um, we have a marriage between lord sita and lord ram and it's done very elaborately this time we had uh, more elaborately here at iskon vaisak we actually had horse driven chariots and bringing lord ram inside the temple and then the elaborate marriage ceremony with lots of devotees attending and we did every ritual that is done in a marriage with um, couples sitting on either side as janaka and dasharatha and then we had a grand marriage feast you know um, distributing all that items which are distributed in a traditional uh, marriage so it was a wonderful wonderful program followed by panchamrita abhishekam of the lord and ram katha and it was wonderful program and i hope you must have also had a great program there at central new jersey so um today i have been asked to speak on um, uh, ramayan so we will be talking uh, from ramayan but we will be talking today not ramayan we will be talking ramayan that is uh, see ramayan means um, journey of lord ram or travels of lord ram or story of lord ram but today what we are going to do is we are going to see it from a different perspective the shri sampradaya uh, prominent um, acharyas have given very good interpretation they say ramayan is a story of mother sita because another name of uh, mother sita is rama so they say this is rama ayan and this whole uh, past time of rama ramayan is actually centered around mother sita so they give wonderful for us anyway devotees whether you say ramayan or rama ayan it's all the same whether we glorify mother sita or we glorify lord ram so they uh, very interesting way they presented and they, and in fact um, there's one very prominent uh, acharya in the shri sampradaya his name is um, uh, vedanta deshika just like we have our jiva goswami they have their vedanta deshika and he says that the alternate names for ramayan could be uh, the story of mother sita or he said it could be uh, i mean the glories of mother sita or it could be the killing of ravana you know because that's the whole uh, ramayan centered around so um in fact these um, uh, acharyas they they say every kanda of ramayan has something to do with mother sita and it's and it's moving around mother sita for example they say bal kanda means it's about marriage of sita and they say ayodhya kanda means it's it's about the story of how sita devi accompanied lord ram to exile if you say uh, aranya kanda means it's about how sita got abducted if it is krishkanda kanda it's about how they are trying to locate sita or a search for sita has uh, begin and then they say the uh, sundara kanda is meeting of sita ji and hanuman in the conversation between them and then they say um, the yuddha kanda is about um, 
you know the reunion of mother sita with uh, lord ram and the uttara kanda the extra kanda is about uh, mother sita going back uh, home or you know uh, just the departure of mother sita so the whole thing they presented you know centered around mother sita and i find it very beautiful so that's what we are going to do today we are going to speak about rama ayan so we'll speak about mother sita her appearance and disappearance and the whole past time right from her appearance to her disappearance from her perspective how things happened so um the past time begins like this there is this very um pious king called shira dwaja janaka so before we start that we actually need to know this word janaka because many of them are you know usually we assume you know that's how you know from childhood we are hearing you know in the quiz question the who is the father of sita janak maharaj but actually janak is a title the, his name is shira dwaja janaka so how did they get this janaka and why is everybody in that dynasty called janaka has a past time behind it so it so happens that there was this one king called nimi he was the son of uh, king ishwaku and king ishwaku was a very pious king he had this glorious son called nimi nimi wanted to have a fire sacrifice for the welfare of the citizens so he called his kul guru vashishtha muni that why not you um, officiate this fire sacrifice and i want to do something for the welfare of the citizens so he said very well but i have another engagement i need to go to the heavens because indra has also sent me an invite to do some fire sacrifice there so once i complete i'll come back now the years are passing by and vashishta hasn't come back yet because there's an elaborate yagya going up there and then um, maharaj nimi thought that it's it's getting delayed so he approached another uh, uh, sage and he got his uh, fire sacrifice done and that also went on for many years i think somewhere i was reading maybe 5000 years or something like that and the fire sacrifice went very well and then when the sacrifice was over he was distributing the cows and distributing the wealth to the brahmanas and they were just ending the Uh, fire sacrifice and at that time vashishta comes back and he comes back he gets very upset he said did you do the fire sacrifice without me couldn't you have that patience i told you i am coming back and i would have do it and why did you get another person to do this fire sacrifice so i curse you just die and maharaj nimi said it's unfair you are a, uh, you know our official um, you know what do you say the kul guru for our dynasty and instead of giving importance to us you went there up there and did indra's uh, fire sacrifice probably you got a lot more wealth from indra probably you got greedy for that wealth and you just left our fire sa- sacrifice and you went there so i curse you you die so now both the guru and disciple they counter curse and both of them are powerful and you know very virtuous and so but at that fit of anger because they counter curse both died now the 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 guru is lying there and the king is lying there and the brahmana is wondering what to do now both are dead but they need to now you know what should they do they have to go ahead the the kingdom doesn't have a king and they need a kul guru so they um they immediately started reciting mantras to you know uh, bring them back to life and uh, immediately maharaj nimi who is already out of his body he speaks out he said i don't want the body again i'm i'm done for whatever the body was supposed to done i'm done for i don't want to come back inside my body i better stay like this so then the brahmanas asked find ask for some boon you know we already officiated mantras we have started doing what what can we do for you and he said okay um in fact he wanted to go back but they said since you are destined to stay for for these many years in this body and you are prematurely leaving it so anyway you will have to stay here so then maharaj nimi says that i prefer to stay on the eyelids you know the, the with this eyes where we see the supreme lord i prefer to stay on the eyelids you know everybody's eyelids so that's how maharaj nimi got a place to sit there and that's why he's called you know that's why uh, this is called nimisha because maharaj nimi stays on the eyelids that's why every part of our body every limb has something to do with some devata or some you know some them some demigod something and if we don't use them for krishna's service they actually curse us so that means when when we don't use his eyes in seeing krishna's divya mangala you know the auspicious form of krishna maharaj nimi is getting upset with us that what are you doing i'm up there on your eyelid and just use it for you know um, seeing you know, open them and see lord krishna's beautiful forms so then maharaj nimi stayed on the eyelids and then um, 
um vashishtha muni because i mean he was already cursed so they just put his soul inside a pot and then of course there's another story which i don't want to go today into and how mitra and varuna and you know urvashi comes there and how uh, vashishta gets reborn from the pot along with agatsya and sudarshana they were, they were the first um, test tube babies you know like they, they were born like test tube babies inside from the pot from the semen of uh, mitra varuna so um this is what happens and now uh, because um, there is no king and maharaj nimi said he doesn't want to come back inside the body the brahmanas had no choice but they churned the body of maharaj nimi the, the dead corpse of maharaj nimi was churned and when his body was churned uh, came out a baby now because the body was churned in sanskrit is called mithi it was churned so the the boy born came to be known as mithi janak mithi janak janak means one who who is father for himself because he has no father no mother he is born from his father's body right he is born from the dead corpse so he is called janak because he he is born from the father he is sharing the same physical body with the father and born by churning so he was called mithi janak and from there on anybody in that dynasty had that name janak so shira dwaja janak was mother sita's father and then that place which was ruled by him because it was ruled by mithi janak the place came to be known as mithila the place ruled by uh, mithi janak so that's why you see that name mithila you see that name janak and there was also given another name called uh, vaideha vaideha is actually one who has no bodily conception of life or rather or maybe you can say one who is not attached to body or one who does not have body so because maharaj nimi's descendants who was not attached to body i mean it's a great thing see actually in the vedic culture as soon as somebody dies the first thing is that they burn the body immediately they don't want to keep the body for long time because as long as the body is there the soul is so attached it doesn't want to leave the body and go is just hovering around and trying all the ways to get back inside the body so actually the soul is so attached to the body it doesn't want to leave the body but in case of uh, maharaj nimi he doesn't want the body he is not attached to the body so that's very uh, special somebody who is not attached to bodies so that's why he's called vai de i was without body or not attached to body or not attracted to body and then that's why you see um lord ram also very lovingly calls mother sita vai dehi one who is in that glorious dynasty who are not distracted or to the bodily concept of life or who are not attached to body so now what happens coming back to our main story shira dwaja janak the father of mother sita he was a pious king he wanted to once uh, perform a fire sacrifice for the welfare of his citizens now to perform a fire sacrifice they need some particular kind of herbs they need kusha grass so they need to do a certain kind of a cultivation so maharaj janak he himself was tilling the land with a plow to grow some you know uh, glow some plants or grass which was required for the fire sacrifice and while he was doing that every time the plow gets stuck they stop there and they give lots of uh, charity and then they again start plowing and then wherever it stops they again start giving charity and when they give charity the plow starts moving that's how the whole uh, ceremony takes place but this time um, it wasn't moving the plow was not moving they were giving charity but it was not moving and they were wondering what is obstructing it so then they started digging and then they got this golden box and wherein they found mother sita looking so beautiful as a lotus flower and because she was found at the tip of the plow maharaj janak call her sita which in, in sanskrit means the tip of the plow so she came to be called as uh, sita and uh, maharaj janak was very happy since he didn't have children and he raised mother sita very um, lovingly so that is how uh, mother sita came into maharaj uh, janak's um, life now everything was going uh, wonderfully well so once it so happens that um, mother sita is um, you know playing with some uh, flower ball so while she was playing with this flower ball they had this big um, shiv dhanush in their antar bhavan in their palace now this shiv dhanush was a very huge dhanush and uh, dhanush's bow so this shiv dhanush was a very huge bow and it was uh, actually belonged to lord shiva and he had used it uh, while fighting a war 
and he had given it as a gift to the devatas and the devatas had given it to as a gift to devavrata and devavrata's dynasty was this you know maharaj nimi's uh, dynasty so that's how um, this bow uh, came to uh, maharaj janak's house so it was very heavy it was very huge it it was put it was kept in a box and then it had those wheels and every time it had to be moved there were some 5000 foot soldiers and a few elephants they were tied with the rope and that's how the whole thing was pulled it was that heavy but to the surprise of maharaj janak what he sees one day is when mother sita was playing with a uh, flower ball and the flower ball got stuck you know below this bow shiva dhanush and she very effortlessly with her left hand picks it up and takes out the uh, flower ball and then puts the um, bow back and when maharaj uh, janak realizes that sita has such immense um, strength and you know she's so uh, powerful he decides at that time that i will get my daughter married to somebody who is having equal strength otherwise you know imagine on the day of the marriage the mother sita hugs her husband and he will you know he will be he, he'll be in two pieces because she's got immense uh, strength so they decided that will get her married to somebody who is having that equal strength like her now this is what is happening here in mother sita's life and there in um, ayodhya something else is going on here prince ram is uh, grown up into a teenage boy he's maybe like 14 15 year old boy now here mother sita is maybe 7 year old and um, here vishwamitra muni comes vishwamitra muni comes and can you put that clock so that i can see otherwise i'll go on and on without understanding the time okay thank you so um mother sita um that's with mother sita and then here lord ram is growing up into a you know young uh, energetic uh, teenage boy and then he's finished his education he's come back from gurukul and vishwamitra muni comes and ask um, maharaj dashrath then i want to take your son with me because there are certain demons who are causing disturbance in our very important uh, fire sacrifice and then there is this whole past time where dashrath maharaj is reluctant he doesn't want to send lord ram because he thinks lord ram is very young but then vashisht um, uh, you know in- intervenes and then he convinces that you know uh, vishwamitra is a very angry sage and he'll get really upset if you shouldn't offend him and you better send ram and i'm sure you know and trust me he will take care of uh, lord ram nicely so then lord ram and lakshman two little boys they go with vishwamitra and then uh, vishwamitra they they kill tadaka they kill subahu they um they throw marich you know uh, with one arrow some 800 kilometers away and then they make sure that the fire sacrifice um, goes nicely and safely and and then they go and um, also uh, deliver ahalya who was cursed by her husband and she was in the form of a shila or a, or a stone and then by the touch of the dust of lord ram's lotus feet she regains her uh, form back so everything is going on wonderfully and vishwamitra is so happy he's he is with the supreme personality of godhead and is really enjoying having conversations with him talking to him he's like a tour guide showing him different places telling him different stories t- teaching him different mantras you know some some mantras some different arrows he is giving to lord ram which will be useful for him in his future wars everything is going so wonderfully and now imagine as it is the supreme personality of god it is so attractive and, and then now he is in a form of a young child like a, like a teenage boy is all the more attractive in fact he is doing such wonderful service to vishwamitra he gets up early in the morning does his all whatever the oblations and whatever um, the uh, rituals need to be done you know early in the morning uh, and then um, in the night also before he goes to rest he massages vishwamitra's uh, feet you know and does all that a disciple needs to do for guru and vishwamitra is so happy so uh, whenever i uh, talk about this past time i'm just uh, reminded of this suprabhatam because the first verse in suprabhatam talks about this because um, vishwamitra is so attracted to lord ram that he wants lord ram in his vision all the time but um, when the night comes lord has to sleep and he is he is not in vishwamitra's vision anymore 
and vishwamitra is unable to sleep in the night he's so uneasy and he's just waiting when will the sun rise so that i can again see the beautiful lotus like face of lord ram so early in the morning before the sun rises in the brahma muhurta vishwamitra takes it like an excuse and he goes you know uh, to the hut where lord ram is lying down and he wakes him up and he says hey uh, you know awake awake come on get up my dear son uh, uh, ram or other uh, oh O oh, virtuous son O oh, virtuous son of Kaushalya get up get up get up just see the sun is about to rise don't you want to get up and finish up your morning rituals so this verse you know it goes like this it says um, it says uh, kaushalya supraja rama purva sandhya pravartate uttishta narasadula kartavyam daivam anikam very beautiful verse it begins like this which vishwamitra is chanting oh, kaushalya supraja rama get up get up get up oh son of kaushalya you have to do your morning rituals but actually the antara bhava or the inside bhava is he is not able to you know be there uh, without looking at lord ram's lotus feet and he's just like you know in hurrying up come on get up get up so that i can see you again and you know let us begin our uh, journey further so this is what is happening everything's going wonderful now somebody comes and informs um uh, vishwamitra that um, there is a very huge uh, fire sacrifice a dhanush yagam you know uh, going to happen in janakapuri that is in mithila so uh, why not you also come and lord uh, and uh, maharaj janak has sent invite to all the sages so you do please come and uh, watch the fire sacrifice happen and come and give your blessings so uh, vishwamitra says very well then so he decides to take ram and lakshman with him to janakapuri now this janakapuri is a very beautiful place i've been there a couple of years ago wonderful wonderful place it's in nepal and um, there is a huge uh, palace of mother sita and there is a very beautiful temple and then there is this vivaha mandapa where the marriage of uh, sita ram uh, um, uh, lakshman and uh, urmila and uh, bharat and mandavi and shatrughna and shrutakirti all the four of them got married that place is still there you can see and it is so special place with such wonderful vibration it's it's like vrindavan it's like uh, ayodhya everybody is just chanting sita ram sita ram and there are there are lots of baba ji's the lots of s- sages and um you know holy men just moving around and people are very soft hearted nice natured cultured very beautiful place to, uh, to have darshan and very beautiful deities of um, sita ram so um so then he decides and now he see the, just like you know the boys nowadays uh, the latest is you talk to them about video games and they get pretty excited oh, this is the latest video game this is what has happening so those days the the latest is you know um, about the bows and arrows so um, when vishwamitra is talking about this huge bow and how it you know it was given by lord shiva to the devatas and how devavrata got it and how huge it is and how so many elephants are required to move it and on and rama and lakshman get so excited oh guru ji we want to see that he said yes i'm taking you you're coming with me we will go there and then after that i'll drop you back uh, home to ayodhya that's the plan so they are very excited and they all decide to go so they are walking and they are walking and they reach uh, this place called uh, janakpur now in those days you know every king at the the borders of their uh, you know whatever their rule their kingdom they have places specially for sadhus for sages to come and take rest and they have and they have they have very beautiful place there are mango groves there are nice arrangements for water there are certain some uh, maid servants given there who take care of the, the sadhus because those is the, the sadhus are simply traveling from one kingdom to another what does a vaishnav do vaishnav wants to just you know um tirthi kurvanti tirthani a vaishnav actually he himself is a holy place personified but he keeps traveling uh, to different kingdoms and then meet the kings there and then give them some spiritual knowledge stay there stay there for some time and then move on to another kingdom and then move on to another kingdom so while they travel these facilities were made by the kings for their convenience so now as um, uh, vishwa mitra he reaches the border of uh, janakpur very nice arrangements are made and there is this arrangements are made and there is this very nice uh, place called um, amarakuti 
a, a beautiful ashram surrounded by mango groves and the sevak the servants of uh, maharaj janak they welcome uh, vishwamitra and they ask him to take rest in this place so vishwamitra he comes and then he just settles himself and by that time um, janak maharaj arrives with satananda the the they, their guru you know their local uh, guru so they all they all come and then they welcome vishwamitra and then janak maharaj is pouring water and rose water and doing abhishekam for the father abhishekam the uh, lotus feet of uh, vishwamitra he is just you know uh, offering service and you know asking okay how are you what can i do for you all this is going on so while this is going on maharaj janak's eye falls on lord ram who is standing behind vishwamitra muni and he gets amazed of such a beautiful looking young boy and usually what happens the the parents of girls you know and especially the girls who have attained a certain age whomever they look at any boy for them you know he is a prospective groom you know they start scrutinizing him with that eyes or oh, he's looking good he's earning good his salary is good his nature is good maybe he'll be a good match for my daughter so he is you know similarly janak is seeing that oh he's wonderful good looking boy very mannered boy so he's just thinking but who is this boy who is accompanying vishwamitra and now um, vishwamitra he doesn't tell name of lord ram when he sees that maharaj janak is very much attracted to ram he starts explaining oh these two boys they are the they are prince who helped me to finish my fire sacrifice or oh, they both are very uh, courageous and you know what this elder boy did and that's how he's introducing oh he just killed tadaka and then he did this and then he went to uh, the ashram of gautam muni and there he delivered you know ahalya so he's telling all this and this satananda he is a son of ahalya so when he hears that his mother got delivered he immediately understands oh then this must be lord ram because he knows she, her mother was his mother was destined to be delivered by lord ram so he immediately understands oh this is lord ram and then finally he says well they are the sons of maharaj dashrath of ayodhya so now they become very happy oh okay so this is what is their lineage this is what the dynasty they belong to and then finally what happens um um ram is it's a young boy and they have come to a new place and and guruji had told them about this big bow dhanush shiv dhanush they are all excited so they are asking guruji when are we going to see that shiv dhanush and and vishwamitra is like yes yes i am going to take you and then lord ram and lakshman asked that if you don't mind uh, guruji can we just go around and see the city and see the town of uh, mithila what you know yeah yeah definitely you can go so just like krishna and balram they together went to mathura and moved around now uh, ram and lakshman they just move around the whole town of uh, janakpur they're just walking around and they're just looking oh, what are what is this place like what are these buildings what is going on what temples they have so as they are walking on the streets of uh, janakpur the janakpur vasis they are all looking the residents of janakpur they are looking at um, ram and lakshman and they are just wondering who are these two beautiful boys oh they look so wonderful so the ladies there is just peeping out of the windows and they are just looking at ram and lakshman and then somebody is saying hey look at the gate look at the way this boy is walking doesn't he look you know doesn't he reflect the power of a lion the way he is walking and some other lady says i don't think so i think he has a rage of a tiger just see the way he walks and somebody says no just see he's look he's just walking with the pride of a bull you know the way he's walking such pride on his face and somebody says oh no he has he's just walking like a snake you know like the little um, energy you know how the snakes do he, doesn't he walk like this and everybody is talking something and then somebody says he look at his eyes they're so beautiful and somebody says what eyes forget about it i'm simply looking at the eyebrows and they're very beautiful and i can't take out my eyes from his eyebrows so i think it will take some time by the time i go down to the eyes and somebody says but i am still at the shoulder somebody help me i just can't move my eyes from his shoulder is so beautiful looking and everybody is just looking at lord ram and it's like as if their eyes have become like cups you know drinking nectar and looking at the beautiful face of lord ram and all these young girls they are thinking so many things in their mind somebody is thinking that oh he is the right person for our sita and i if i have done any think any pious karma in my life i'm just ready to give everything a lot but make sure that this boy gets married to our sita and then and then somebody else you know 
praying something and then somebody else and everybody is just looking at him and praying and while all these young girls are laughing and giggling and talking something the old women in the house they are saying hey what are you all doing what is that what are you looking at come on move make place we want to see and then the old ladies start peeping and their eyes get stuck you know and they said oh how beautiful and there's some other old lady the third generations the, the other ladies in the house and they are saying what are you looking allow me to look but they can't move they're very old they're just walking with the sticks and you know they can't so they say amma you know the grandmother stay there i'll tell you how these boys are looking see i'll explain to you there are these two beautiful boys and these boys are looking so beautiful so beautiful they're looking as beautiful as they're looking as beautiful as they're looking or they're looking as beautiful as they are so the the old lady says what is this he said but we don't know what word to use we can't compare this boy to lotus we can't compare to moon we can't because he's as beautiful as he is we can't compare him to anybody else we can compare him to only himself that beautiful this boy is so everybody and at that moment what happens there are many of the old ladies and the young ladies who are who when they look at lord ram instantaneously they have that vatsalya bhava oh i wish i had a son like this or some some had madhurya bhava oh i wish i could be his wife oh i love him so much so everybody had different bhavas and lord fulfilled everybody's desire that's why you see in the garga samhita there is a special section about the gopis how you know the the rishis in the dandakaraniya forest who were looking at lord ram with madhurya bhava got a chance to become gopis in in dwapar yuga when lord came as you know in the form of lord krishna and then even the ayodhya vasis who were looking at you know lord with that madhurya bhava they also got a chance to become gopis and the janakpuri vasis those who wanted to have lord as their husband even they got a chance to become gopis and even um the people from kaushal you know where kaushalya's uh, birthplace you know because lord ram you know definitely goes to his uncle's house kaushalya's house you know maybe during some vacation so people from that place also got attracted to lord ram in madhurya bhava and even they got chance to become gopis so like that you know because we wonder so many gopis and but all of them have previously desired for krishna as their as their husband as their lover and everything got uh, uh, fulfilled in um, uh, dwapar yuga because they had desired previously in treta yuga and then it gets fulfilled in dwapar yuga when lord comes as uh, krishna in the form of krishna so this is what is happening and everybody is you know very happy in seeing uh, lord ram and lakshman and now they walk and walk and they finally reach a it's a nice beautiful garden so lord ram says to lakshman okay let me pick some nice flowers and guru ji will be so happy if we take this nice flowers back uh, to the ashram and uh, guru maharaj can use it for his puja so they said wonderful so they both went and they started plucking flowers and meanwhile what happens mother sita comes there with her friends and she is doing some gauri puja so she is also making some garland and then her eyes fall on ram and lord ram's eyes fall on her and they both look at each other and then mother sita immediately puts her head down and she goes inside the temple and then she's looking at you know uh, mother durga and praying that uh, i don't know i have never ever looked at a stranger i have never ever looked at a man or a boy in my life this is the first time i'm seeing somebody and at, at that instant i have a different kind of feeling for him i don't know why but i'm just praying to you mother can you make me can you make him my husband that's what she starts praying that i'm attracted to him now this is what is happening and meanwhile lord ram and lakshman they just you know hang around in the garden for some time and then they go back to uh, vishwamitra now vishwamitra is wondering what took them so long they just said they're going to see the city and come back and they took so much time so when they come back vishwamitra asked him you know hey what took you so long so lord ram you know very innocently he says guru ji uh, we just saw a beautiful girl in the garden and that delayed us so Lakshman is just you know hitting on his forehead how can you be so uh, you know straight forward you can't tell everything to guru ji certain thing has to be said diplomatically and lord ram is like what is wrong i'm just telling him the truth we saw a beautiful girl in the garden and that's why we were delayed so vishwamitra is laughing okay fine that's all right now forget it there now we need to go and see the um, see the dhanush you know see the bow which we have come to see let's go and participate in the dhanush 
yagam so then lord ram and um, uh, lakshman and uh, vishwamitra they walk up to the palace and then this whole uh, thing is going on the dhanush yagam is going on at the end of it um, maharaj dashrath is expressing that how he has been waiting for some you know uh, uh, brave or some valorous um, you know yodha to come and break this bow you know or at least lift this bow and that he has put this precondition for her daughters for his daughter's marriage and is really worried if his daughter is going to remain a brahmacharini whole her life because he has not come across any anybody so powerful so as to move that so while this all conversations are going on and now some versions of rama and say that there was sita swayambar i mean there was an actually um a ceremony where this bow was put in the middle of the assembly and there were um kings from different um countries gathered assembled there and they all tried but in some other versions i've heard that it was an ongoing process every time people were coming trying and going even it, it went on for few years now we'll take the other version for today's class so now this uh, this bow and um, you know is lying there in the middle of the assembly and everybody is trying but nobody is able to lift it and then um, finally um, vashishta vishwamitra muni finally vishwamitra muni um, he looks at ram that you know you can you can go and um, you know see the dhanush you can go and lift it so this is what happens and finally so even before he says something actually the valmiki ramayan says that Vishwamitra did not ask him to break it. He said, "What's a Ram?" Vishwamitra says, "What's a Ram? Go and see. You know, you wanted to see the bow, right? You can go and see the bow." So as he's just seeing the bow, and meanwhile, um, Janak Maharaj is like, "Oh, so many people tried. Nobody could lift this, um, you know, bow. Maybe my daughter is going to remain unmarried. Oh, I'm so sorry about this. I, I, I think this earth is no more. You know, brave uh, warriors remained. You know, everybody. So he's just, you know." saying so many things and meanwhile um, lord ram is just looking very enthusiastically at the bow and then finally um uh, vishwamitra muni he just you know moves his eyebrows in a way that ram understands that yes he has a permission to pick it up now this is very special because just like a obedient wife a chaste wife doesn't need to be said asked what needs to be done she understands you know what her husband wants similarly a disciple a good disciple understand what the guru wants even before the guru says something you know he understand the moment the moment of the eye what the guru wants so lord ram was very expert and he understood what vishwamitra is asking him to do so lord ram he just takes a you know makes a pradakshina he just circumambulates the bow and then he pays obeisance to the bow and then he pays obeisance to maharaj janak and then he pays obeisance to his guru maharaj and then he pays obeisance to all the other sages in the assembly and then he pays obeisance to um all the other kings who were assembled in that assembly and then he pays obeisance to all the queens or you know who were sitting there up in the um gallery and then he pays obeisance to um sky and then he pays obeisance to mother earth and then he pays obeisance to all the digapalakas and then he pays obeisance to all of the devatas and then he pays obeisance to sun god and then he remembers mentally his father and he pays obeisance and it's all these things is going on is going on paying obeisance to so many people even before you know touching the bow and meanwhile mother sita who is just you know looking at him from the gallery is wondering why is he taking so much time i'm already you know my blood pressure is high and i'm already getting very whether he's going to break it or is is you know he's going to break it or is not going to break it and she's already worried and lord ram is taking so much time and then mother sita is praying and praying and praying and she's praying to mother durga that oh maybe um you know if i've done anything good you know in my life please take all those karmas please make this bow very light so that he can pick it up so while all these things are going on finally lord ram pays obeisances to the uh, bow and then finally he just touches it and then finally now he's about to actually the bow is like this in a sleeping position and he's about to now pick it up and he's supposed to keep it vertical but then in some explanations by acharyas they say that while he was you know he just put his a- hand on the bow the the the, the mark where which which connects both seas you know when he puts it there he hears the anklet bells of mother sita so he just puts his eyes up and he sees mother sita is looking at him and then she, he's also looking at her and he gets distracted so at that moment what he does is that instead of putting it vertically he just lifts it horizontally up there and he he thinks that if i 
make it vertical, then I lose her sight because I'm looking at her and she's looking at me. And then finally, he just picks it up breathwise and then he ties a rope to it. Now, the bow has to be, you know, the rope has to be tightened. So while he's tightening it, he, he tights, tighten it a little harder and the bow breaks. The bow breaks into two pieces. And when the bow breaks, it's not a small thing. It's a huge bow. So there's a lot of noise. There's like a, there's a, like a lightning and the, the whole earth is trembling. And all the, um, the waters, you know, in the oceans, they've all come out, you know, and they come up to the banks. And all the digapalakas have moved and all the grahas, all the grahas, they've gone into wrong houses. You know, Brahaspati has gone into Shani. Shani has gone off in Brahaspati. Everything is moving. Everybody, they thought, what? What has happened? The whole and you know, all the demigods are showering flowers and everything is shaking. You know, now to control Earth only Ananta Shesh can do it. That is Lakshman. So he just gets down from his uh, chair and then with his thumb he just stops the movement of the Earth. You know, and then everything becomes peaceful and it cools down. And everybody is so happy. And Maharaj and uh, except for Maharaj Janak and uh, Vishwamitra and Ram and Lakshman and certain sages rest everybody who was there in that assembly fainted because they could not could not tolerate that you know the weight it, it you know broke into pieces it was huge sound and they all fainted it took some time for everybody to revive and some fainted out of happiness some fainted out of uh, sadness because they wanted to marry mother Sita because I mean I mean this has been going on for years now in fact there were many who were criticizing Janak Maharaj that why don't you give up that condition because anyway nobody is able to fulfill it and your daughter will remain unmarried just forget about it just you know let, let we want to get married to her so it was you know such a big news now what happens so finally everything is done and Maharaj Janak becomes very happy and he says okay so now I want my daughter to come down and put the Jaya Mala you know put the um, the flower garland around um, uh, Ram and you know uh, accept him as her husband then Lord Ram says no I'm not getting married so what, what does that mean he said well uh, I was just asked to, you know, to see if I'm able to lift this bow or not. And by mistake, I broke it. But I can't get married without my uh, father's permission. So I, I didn't tell him that I'm coming from home to get married or something. I, my guru asked me to pick it up and I just pick it up and by mistake it broke. And when they hear that, you know, half of them are like, what is this? We thought this is a happy moment. So they ask him to explain what's your problem. He said, no, this is very simple. I need to take permission of my father. So immediately, um, you know, um, Vishwamitra, he intervenes and he tells Janak Maharaj, okay, fine, there is nothing to get disappointed. He's not saying that he will not get married he's saying i need permission of my father so go ahead and send message to maharaj dashra so janak says all right fine and this immediately send a messenger that please go and inform uh, maharaj dashra invite him and you know take his permission so the messengers have gone to invite dashrat maharaj and meanwhile everybody else who are in the ladies uh, apartment there up in the gallery they're all very disappointed oh what is this why is he doing this and the only person who is not disappointed is mother sita and they're wondering how come she is she supposed to be in anxiety but she's all smiles is it how come you're not affected and mother sita says I i'm very happy he's the right person I, I should get married to and they're saying what does this mean and she says that you know uh, there are three qualities a woman looks for in a man one is that he should be uh, he should be able to protect her he should be brave he should be you know powerful and lord ram is powerful the way he lifted the bow i'm sure he can protect me for the rest of my life so i'm very happy he's courageous he's brave and he can protect me he's powerful and the second thing that a woman looks in for in, in a man is that he should be prudent he should know what to speak when to speak how much to speak he should be able to express himself usually you know the the gender problem is the the ladies are more talkative and they are more expressive and they and whatever it is they they can express themselves very well but the men usually um, are not so expressive they think a lot but they may not speak a lot but um, here he she sees this quality in lord ram that yeah he speaks and he speaks well and he knows what to speak at the right time when to speak and he spoke so prudently so perfectly that i need to take permission of 
of my father and the third quality uh, she says that i you know a, a, a woman looks in a man is that he should be self controlled so she says what a self control lord ram has it's not that he gets super excited and he says forget about my father's permission I, i'm sure he's going to be happy that i'm getting such a beautiful wife to get married to but he's so self controlled controlling his emotion controlling his senses and he's not getting distracted so that's very special because um, you know sita was such a beauty that all the you know in all the three worlds whether it was the um the upper planetary systems or whether it's the lower planets everybody was talking about her beauty and there were thousands and likes of people who were like dying to get married to her and here she is ready to put the garland around lord ram but he restrains himself and says no i'm not doing it just now i need permission and that is something so special so he said all these three qualities are present in him and i'm so happy that he's going to be my husband so that's all right i can always wait you know and when the permission arrives we'll get married so finally um the messenger goes to uh, dasharath maharaj and then when the messenger is explaining to uh, dasharath maharaj that your son has killed tadaka and has killed subahu and then has you know uh, delivered ahalya and then he has done this and then he has done this 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 and when he is explaining all this maharaj dasharath's heart is swelling with pride is so happy oh really my son did this oh my son did this and every time he's saying something he's removing one you know um, navratna mala he's removing one pearl necklace he's removing one diamond necklace and he's showering it on the messengers and then finally the messenger says now we want to tell you something which he did amazing and what he has done is he has broken the shiva dhanush and he has won the um, hand you know the veera shulka he has won the hand of uh, sita and then janak becomes very happy but he immediately turns to vashishtha muni and he asks them uh, the dynasty of maharaj janak do they follow vedic culture and vashishtha muni says yes yes they are wonderful let's oh then i am very happy he was not he was not interested in how beautiful sita was or how um, glorious or how opulent their kingdom was what he really wanted to know is do they follow vedic culture and he was very happy to know that yes they follow vedic culture so they become very happy and then dashrath maharaj is like all oh, right we are coming so he gets ready with all his soldiers and you know, the citizens of ayodhya they also want to come for the marriage so uh, there is a grand 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 procession there are bullock carts and there are horse carts and there are elephant elephants all decked up you know with jewelry and everybody is looking so beautiful in the best of their dresses with lots of flowers and lots of sweets and lots of savories and lots of other um decorative items and ornaments and lots of different gifts and and clothes and silk clothes and so many things they are taking in you know cart loads and everybody is just walking and there is a huge huge session and not only the ayodhya vasis are there even the uh, um, people from different other kingdoms and then the devatas are there and everybody is there in the procession and the procession is so long so long right from ayodhya to um, janakpuri the procession is so long that by the time the first person in the procession had put his leg inside janakpuri the last person in the procession is still in ayodhya i mean that huge is the procession that the first person has already put his leg but the last person is still walking from ayodhya i mean that huge procession is there right from ayodhya to uh, mithila and everybody is just you know dancing and singing and you know our ram is going to get married and our ram is getting married so they are so happy and they're all going like this and the devatas they come and offer okay um you know that we want now now the procession from ayodhya is reaching janakpuri and now uh, janak maharaj comes to welcome dasharath and now see they were they even made palaces very quickly within few days just to welcome uh, maharaj dasharath on the way there were so many facilities created now um it's believable because you see even now where we don't have this mantra shakti you see d- recently during the covid times china made an hospital in 10 days just like that in 10 days they could make a hospital so those days they had so much mantra shakti and so much manpower and they had so much opulence so definitely they maybe have have created so many palaces and so many nice facilities on the way and then finally um, um dashrath maharaj meets lord ram and then you know, lord ram is also now on the horse and the now now just on which horse will lord ram sit and how will he go that that is a big argument now because all the devatas you know agni says i want to give my chariot and indra says but i want to give airavat he should sit on him and then the other devatas but i want to give him so everybody is talking and then vishwamitra says stop it i will decide what will ram do so he said i think kama devata 
the cupid he should be the horse for lord rama because rama on kama and that will look nice because rama is very beautiful and kama is also beautiful so kama and then rama should sit on that so then finally lord rama is sitting on kama devata you know and kama devata is carrying lord ram as a horse you know and then that's how they are just moving the whole procession you know uh, going towards mother sita and now in this procession there is lord shiva and then there is brahma and everybody is there so lord shiva um, is just walking but kama devata is just very, uh, very mockingly looking at lord shiva you know and making fun of him because you know they have this you know uh, fighting and lord shiva is angry on kama and he had burnt him so now kama is like you can't do anything to me now because i am under lord ram and then um, the lord shiva is also you know making signs to him and saying that's all right but the moment you leave lord ram's association i'm going to attack you so kama says well i'm not so stupid to leave lord ram i'll be always stay under lord ram so this all is you know going on then acharya has given a beautiful commentary saying that um, uh, anybody who is under lord ram supervision cannot be um, distracted by kama the main problem that we are facing in this material world is our desires our kama which is taking us away from rama but we should be in association of rama then kama cannot disturb because kama is under lord rama's subjugation in fact um, um, just hearing just hearing lord ram's name just seeing lord ram's beautiful form just hearing lord ram's katha taking lord ram's prasad everything connected to ram purifies us from kam in fact even ravana got purified i'll tell you one very beautiful story that i had heard you know when um, when uh, ravan approaches uh, kumbhakaran that you know why not you help me i'm in this middle of this war and i've kidnapped you know abducted this sita ram's wife and you know so please help me through this war and kumbhakaran says am i your brother i thought you were intelligent why are you acting stupid you just want to enjoy that lady why do you have to do such a big drama for this you have a power to disguise in whatever form you like why not you just disguise yourself as lord ram and then you go and enjoy her and there enter ends the matter why all this war and all these things so uh, ravan tells kumbhakaran oh you think i'm stupid you think i didn't get this idea before i got this idea long before and i did it also i disguised myself as lord ram but even before i could approach her the moment i disguised myself as lord ram i even got the qualities of of lord ram and everybody whom i was seeing i was looking at them as mother so even when mandodari came in front of me i was looking at her as mother i could not lust for anybody any woman that i see i got a motherly feeling just by taking the disguise of lord ram so that's very dangerous in in disguise of lord ram you can't enjoy with any woman you look at everybody as mother so that is why i just gave up that idea so that powerful is lord ram's association lord ram's name lord ram's remembrance so um finally i uh, you know the procession um, reaches and then there are lots of rituals happening and then from this side vashishta muni is talking about their lineage oh our dynasty is like this like this like this you know and then from here satananda is talking but well our dynasty is also like this and these are the important kings who were born in our dynasty so now they just m- matching each other okay your dynasty is glorious even our dynasty is glorious and then coming you know from those kings down 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 to dashrath and Janak, they glorify and then now they come down to um, sita and ram so now they glorifying oh our dear sita is so beautiful she has so good qualities she's so respectful to the elder she's so compassionate to the younger one she's so um, sweet to her friends this is what our sita's quality and she's so delicate that even if a if a freshly grown leaf of a mango tree falls on her skin the skin will become reddish that soft is her skin that how is her beauty and then they say oh is it now listen what we tell about our ram our ram he is like this like this so the both the parties they are going on talking and then finally they say your your sita requires thousand eyes just to see the beauty of our lord ram and they say your ram requires thousand eyes every minute 
added to the existing eyes because our sita's beauty grows every minute so like that the conversations are uh, going on and they're so happy and ecstatic and finally all of them get uh, married all the four prince and uh, sita m- gets married to lord rama and lakshman gets married to urmila and bharat ji gets married to mandavi and shatrughna gets married to uh, shrutikirti and that is how they all get married now this this the whole marriage you know it actually it needs another one class explaining all the different rituals that happen and what all happens and so many things happen inside the marriage and every single ritual how important it is in fact uh, um there is this one funny incident happens you know in in the marriage they, the groom you know bride and the bride groom and the bride they need to exchange uh, flower garlands and when mother sita is trying to put the uh, flower garland and around lord ram's neck uh, lord ram is little you know high you know he's taller than mother sita and mother sita is little shorter and she's unable to reach you know lord ram and now she's just you know um, waiting to put the garland and now usually the kshatriya prince um they don't the usually the kshatriya prince they don't bend down you know they just they just stand you know erect and now they're not able to understand what to do and so mother sita is just waiting with the girl and now she can't look at lord ram she has her veil so she's just looking at the lotus feet of lord ram and she's happy she's just enjoying because even seeing the lotus feet of lord ram is such a privilege and then she has lots of bangles in her hand and the bangles have glass and inside the glass she can see the reflection of lord ram so she's just holding the garland and looking at reflection of lord ram and she's very happy looking at his beautiful face and looking at his lotus feet and now lord ram is waiting is that and he's asking sita you know mentally why are you delaying so much come on now just you know raise your toes and come on put the garland on me and sita is saying that you know you are not able to wait but what about me i waited when you were paying obeisances to your guru and then my father and then all the uh, assembled sages and then you were doing circumambulation of the bow and then you were paying obeisances to the sky and paying obeisances to the earth and i was waiting i was waiting when are you going to be- break the bow so now you better wait i'll take time you know i'll see when i can put the garland so all these things are going on and lord ram is saying i'm not going to bend and sita is saying but i'm unable to reach you and now as they're talking mentally Lakshman who's just getting married you know on the in the other mandapa and all these four marriages are happening and Lakshman is so attached to Lord Ram he's he is getting married but his eyes are on Lord Ram and he's wondering what is happening now if they don't put the garland around each other how are we supposed to do it they're all waiting for them to put because they are the elder ones now he's just waiting waiting and Lord Ram is not doing it so what Lakshman does he's very smart he just runs you know from his mandapa comes and falls on Lord Ram's feet and Lord Ram is wondering what happened to Lakshman oh Lakshman come on get up you are my only shelter and lord ram bends down to pick up lakshman and the moment he bends down sita mata puts the garland around lord ram's neck and everybody is very happy and then but ram is in anxiety and he's asking lakshman what happened are you okay are you fine and lakshman says oh friend i'm okay i think just gas and acidity problem in my stomach looks like i that's all that i just i never finished my marriage and then he just goes back to his mandap and then you know this whole marriage happens and the acharyas give such nice commentary about this they say that because it's it's the duty of the spiritual master you know to to see that the devotee and the lord get connected you know the devotee gets connect to his lord in this case mother sita is like the you know you know playing a role of a devotee and then here is lord ram and lakshman is the spiritual master who just comes and connects uh, you know both of them so this is what it happens and finally they all get married now all of the four princes are married they go back to ayodhya everything is going wonderfully well but then we know what happens then comes mantra and the whole part of kai kai and then uh, rama getting banished uh, to for 14 years of exile and then how their surpankha attacks them and then how rama kills 14000 demons you know in the dandakaranya forest and then finally sita mata gets abducted by ravana and then uh, lord rama with the help of the monkey king sugriva builds this bridge crosses the ocean reaches lanka defeats ravan finally um, gets mother sita back and then of course the agni pariksha gets um, test mother sita the, uh, um, because she was there for maybe like 11 months 14 days 
so um you know when she's brought in the palanquin back to lord ram lord ram says stop the palanquin there ask her to walk from there because all these monkeys have worked so hard just to you know um relieve her or you know get her back from ravan so they are all curious to see her so she should walk from the palanquin so she gets down and she walks and all the monkeys are falling on top of each other just to have a glimpse of her and while she walks and comes up to lord ram lord ram says stop there now as a husband i did my my duty and i i relieved you from ravan and my duty is done but i'm i can't accept you back anymore because you were with uh, ravan so i need to you know i I'm, i'm i'm unable to accept you back so now you can choose somebody else as your husband and you can continue and now when mother sita hears that she's crying and she tells lakshman that can you make a uh, fire for me here i'll just enter into fire because i cannot live without ram and lakshman is wondering what to do and ram says yes you can you can make the fire so he he makes makes fire for mother sita with his arrow and then uh, mother sita enters inside the uh, fire and when she enters inside the fire she comes out because agni vouches for her chastity and says oh lord ram here is your sita and she's pure and because mother sita you know while she's entering the fire she's you know um, she's giving a testimony she said if i have an even mentally for a fraction of second thought about any man except my husband then fire should take me you know inside and if i have if i have done this if i have done that you know she's giving testimony and then fire devta himself comes and says no she's pure and chaste and lord ram please accept her and then lord ram accepts her and then they uh, get on the um, pushpak viman and they finally reach um, ayodhya now now um, if i don't say this part of the story then you know this rama ayan will not be complete so we'll go another 15 20 minutes and then i'll close it you know with her disappearance so um then um, they are all living happily now you know there's pattabhishekam lord uh, ram got coronated as the king bharat uh, was very happy finally he also came back you know lord ram met him at nandigram they all came back to ayodhya everything is wonderful now and there you know um mother sita is the queen of ayodhya lord ram is the king of ayodhya and everything is wonderful now what happened is that lord ram had this system you know in the night goes for rounds in disguise to check if everybody is happy all his citizens are happy so one day it so happens that he hears a washerman taunting his wife that why are you late you know you're coming this late evening you said that you will come yesterday from your mother's house and you come after one whole day so what do you think do you think i'm like lord ram to accept you know like lord ram accepted his wife even though she was with that um, ravana for one year i'm not like lord ram to accept you you know why did you come late you know I, i'll not accept you so when lord ram hears that you know he's shocked oh this is what they're talking about or oh, this is what they say about sita it's very embarrassing you know they they are pointing out on lord ram's character or his uh, you know that how could he accept his wife back even though she uh, stayed for one year with uh, somebody else so now lord ram you know he decides to um, send sita away so he asked lakshman that you take her and you know put her in the ashram of um, uh, valmiki muni so lakshman you know at that uh, point of time lakshman thinks that next avatara i'm definitely not coming as his younger brother because he's making me do things which are so hard to my heart i can't put mother sita there in the forest you know but he has to do it because he's a younger brother so finally he takes mother sita on the chariot and mother sita is wondering where are we going and he says no well actually oh i understand because i was telling um, lord ram that you know when we were in exile we used to have the association of this sadhus and you know i'm just um, miss seeing their associations or oh, is it that is why lord ram has asked you to uh, take me to the forest and meet those sages is it she's not able to understand and finally when she gets down lakshman breaks the news that well um lord ram has you know asked you to stay here in the forest so then uh, she's hurt but then she accepts it and then finally she's put in uh, valmiki muni's ashram under valmiki muni's care and there she gives birth to love kush and then um, you know finally um a uh, love kush uh, uh, grow into a uh, sweet uh, young boys and they learn the ramayan from um, 
valmiki muni and then finally one day they recite this uh, uh, ram katha in the city of ayodhya and and all the citizens of ayodhya are so happy to hear and they take them to lord ram's palace and say look these two young boys they are reciting ramayan such wonderfully so then they also hear the mothers the three mothers kaushalya and sumitra and kaike they also hear and everybody hears and everybody cries hearing and, and then they uh, wonder who are these two boys and then finally um, uh some other events take place where love kush you know uh, uh, tie the horse which was you know to be uh, going for the fire sacrifice and then finally hanuman comes and then finally um there is a f- there is a fight between lord ram and love kush and then mother sita intervenes and informs that these are your children and finally mother sita uh, lord ram ask her to come back now but mother sita says well now i am done with it and if you know in the front of the whole uh, assembly in ayodhya she requests mother earth that if i have been chaste to my husband you know please open up for me and accept me back so the mother earth opens up and then um, in the throne comes out with uh, bhumi devi and then she takes mother sita's hand because she had come from bhumi mother sita and she goes back to uh, mother earth so and then you know, she goes down uh, with the chariot and the uh, mother earth closes and that's how mother sita ends her um, past times now um if i end it here at this note um certain questions will be in the mind that everything is so nice and beautiful in rama and which we can relate to but this thing where lord ram banishes sita uh, just because of somebody's comment which was not even backed up by any evidence it hurts us because the things that is like this sometimes in the scriptures there are certain things which are which are built up on our existing beliefs certain things which we accept and on that certain more things are added uh, which we very easily accept but certain things in scriptures jolt us completely you know just like in the construction sometimes you know uh, in the existing construction certain floors are added it's okay but sometimes to do construction they have to break the old building and start the whole new construction again similarly the scriptures are also like that sometimes they build up on our existing beliefs we know something we accept something and on that some more things are added which we can accept easily but sometimes they just break our existing uh, beliefs or whatever our you know in the mind and then we become like perplexed you know why did lord ram do that everything was ideal in his life he was an ideal son and an ideal husband and an ideal king and an ideal brother but he was not an ideal husband why did he do this why did he banish his wife who was pregnant you know carrying baby and then you know left all alone for no fault of hers it was not her fault that she got kidnapped so um i just want to clarify it for another 10 15 minutes before i close this session otherwise that you know that that thing remains in the mind why did he do that so you know everything that we hear in the scripture uh, cannot be simply seen you know uh, with your eyes it has to be seen with the eyes of intelligence or we have to see it in a in a in a bigger way you know because um uh, there are so many reasons behind everything that happens you know it's it's not as simple as a is equal to b uh, uh, a is equal to b but there are so many things there is a plus c plus d plus e is equal to b so there are so many other factors so um the fact the fact that um it was not that lord rama was a villain and sita was a victim and then lord rama banished her and you know and did injustice to her actually they both sacrificed they both were victims they both were suffering why they both were suffering what's the proof it's not that you know after banishing mother sita lord ram got ma- remarried and he was happily living his life because he was a king and he had all rights to get remarried but he never got married and it's not that after uh, banishing mother sita in the forest he was enjoying life he was he was living like an ascetic he was uh, like an um, you know he was uh, sleeping on the ground he was taking simple food he was just he was just living as see, mother sita must be living in the forest so it, this is a sacrifice he made just because he was a king and he had to set up certain high standards otherwise at that 
movement in the society in their kingdom if he wouldn't have taken this decision it was a wrong precedent for people so he had to do this so he made a sacrifice and and frankly in the core of his heart he never forget for god's mother sita he never replaced mother sita and he never doubted her he considered her to be very pure and what is the proof of that when later on he had to you know perform a fire sacrifice then the sadhus told lord ram that if you have to do the fire sacrifice you, you need to have your wife uh, sitting next to you you can't do it alone so better get married to, to complete this fire sacrifice and then he said no i'll make a golden statue of sita and then she will sit next to me and that's how you perform it that means if she if he considered mother sita to be impure he would not have made her golden statue and made six you know, sit next to him and perform this very pious fire sacrifice that means he considers mother sita to be very pure at the same time he never never got married also so that means he definitely believed in the heart of his heart that it's not mother sita's fault but the situation is like that just for the sake of the citizens he had to uh, send mother sita away and the other thing is that you know people use the word like banished and all but the but the fact is that she was not banished inside the forest somewhere far she was in inside the uh, boundary of ayodhya uh, living in the ashram of valmiki muni and lord rama was aware that she is in the ashram of valmiki muni because uh, because it's inside the boundaries of ayodhya so though not directly but indirectly he was there to protect her because in case if any demons attack or anybody attack because it comes under the boundary of ayodhya as a king he would have always uh, stand for her or protect her and the other part is um, there were some other reasons also see you know there are two things here whenever somebody has to make a uh, moral decision or let's say it is very easy because uh, when when you have a moral dilemma in your life it is easy to sort out because when there is a moral dilemma one thing is right and one thing is wrong so you can easily decide this is wrong this is right i should go with it but if you have an ethical dilemma in life it's very difficult to sort out because in ethical dilemma this is also right and this is also right and now you have to take a decision you have to pick up one right and that becomes a big problem right so uh, this was ha- what was happening with lord ram um you know he has as a as a king he has certain duty and as a husband also he has a certain duty so if he if he keeps her and doesn't you know uh, leave her then he's not doing a proper duty of the king because when the rumor has spread and when people are talking he has to do something about it sometimes even though the rumor is not true if there is no action taken it just spreads in such a way you know and that will disturb the whole uh, um, whole social condition in the in the kingdom so he had to you know it's like um, sometimes the false things spread so fast even before the truth is wearing coat to come out the truth is still getting ready to come out by that time the false uh, propaganda i you know already spread so he had to take this um, action so uh, he he sacrificed his uh, duties of a husband for the greater uh, duties of a uh, ruler you know so of course people now in kaliyuga take it in a very negative way that why did he do that to his wife but actually one supposed to take it in a positive way that he sacrificed his personal comfort his personal relationships his personal family life for the better of the nation um actually ideal leader means responsibility and responsibility means sacrifice and sacrifice means crying so in a in a nation where the leader is crying everybody will be happy in the nation where the leader is you know um um thinking about his own self and he is happy the nation will be crying we can see that in the present day leaders present day leaders um they will not sacrifice their comfort they will not do anything they will for them their family will be first and nation later but in those days there was a high standard for them nation first then family they wouldn't care what happens to their family but for them the nation is so important so instead of in spite of appreciating the people who were criticizing lord ram that you know but he was such a big king that he um sacrificed his um, personal relationship just for the sake of the um, nation so see sometimes it's like this let's say um like you see uh, you know the story of satyavrata muni i don't know he was once sitting under a tree now satyavrata muni had a 
uh, vow that he will not speak a uh, lie so now it so happened that a hunter were hunting a hunting a bear so now the bear he just was hiding and the hunters came and asked satyavrata muni that did you see a bear going from this side now imagine he is in such ethical dilemma if he speaks lie then he has spoken lie he should not speak lie he has a vow he has to speak the truth and tell them and if he speaks truth and tells them that yes the bear has gone this side then he is killing somebody he is being part of it you know somebody is going to lose life just because he didn't you know he spoke the truth so sometimes you have that kind of dilemmas you know what to do both ways you know it's so but something uh you have to take some decision and, and and no matter what decision you take people will criticize you so if lord ram would have not sent sita away uh, even though you no know, i don't care what people say i don't care what you think about my wife but i just going to be with my wife then they would have keep on you know criticizing ram that way also that he never bothered what his citizens thought he was just concerned about he and his family and if he banished sita then they were criticizing in the other way so a leadership means there'll always be criticism but the leader has to see things in the bigger frame and you know see what we be you know benefit bigger benefit for for people and has to make this sacrifice and the other reason is that um there so see everything is you know multi dimensional um there are so many things connected to it actually um uh, there is this um uh, past time of uh, brigu muni actually there was this one demon who was um troubling uh, the devatas a lot for thousands of years he had been troubling and nobody was able to kill him so finally vishnu was trying to kill him and this demon was giving a chase so he was running and vishnu was running behind with an arrow and he was trying to kill and finally this demon gets inside brigumuni's ashram and brigumuni is not there in the ashram and brigumuni's wife khyati is there now um she doesn't know who is this demon she he just comes and says mother please protect me and now these uh, wives of this uh, sage is very simple hearted and she says i'll protect you don't worry who is trying to kill you come on you you sit behind me i'll i'll face the person and then vishnu vishnu comes inside and says move mother please move i need to kill him he is you know big disturbance and he's you know the devatas are suffering i need to kill him so khyati brigumuni's wife says i can't i promised him that i will safeguard him so i'm not going to move now vishnu ji says that i have to kill him you know i've been waiting for this moment for years now so khyati says the only way you can kill him is by killing me if you kill me then you can you know go to him and then finally vishnu had to do it so when brigumuni comes back and he sees this he gets very angry and then he uh, curses vishnu that oh the way you you know cause this separation between me and my wife you'll also be separated from your wife so the lord does not have to accept the curse but sometimes he just does it just to please his devotee so brigumuni's curse lord took it as said all right i will experience this separation from my wife so that's how you know they got separated you know i mean sometimes briefly and then finally for a long time because when ravana kidnapped for brief time he had to be away from her and then again after um, you know becoming a king of ayodhya also he had to be separated from mother sita there was another reason also which was given by uh, madhvacharya in his uh, uh, commentary on mahabharata mahabharata tatparya nirnaya in in that mahabharat he talks about this um, incident about one demon he talks that this demon had done a lot of austerity and at the end of it as a phala as a fruit of his austerity he said because they cannot give them demons amaratvam you know just like hiranyakashipu asked i cannot be killed um, you know in the morning i cannot be killed in the evening outside the house inside the house like that this demon also he put a condition he said i cannot be killed till the time lakshmi narayan are together if lakshmi narayan gets separated only then i can kill so then this whole past time was done where um, you know lord ram uh, banishes mother sita and they are separated and when they are separated then indra chases this demon now that lakshmi narayana separated you know now he'll be killed so this this war goes on for for maybe like thousands of years and then finally he just kills it and while they are separated you know and then and then finally when the demon is killed then um, lord ram asks mother sita to come back but now mother sita says that you know it's time to close the past times here and she says okay no no see um there's another level also of looking at it when they are when see in our cases when we are separated uh from lord 
um, our love does not grow we get into maya but for pure devotees when they are separated from the lord they actually enjoy that rasa also vipralamba bhava where they are enjoying that separation from the lord and their love for the lord is increasing many folds by the separation like the gopis when they were separated from lord krishna their love was increasing many folds in similarly when mother sita was separated from lord ram her her remembrance of lord ram is increasing many folds it's on the zenith it's on the peak you know the way of her fondness for lord ram is you know it's it's a general rule separation increases more um, you know remembrance and fondness but it doesn't happen in our cases because um because our cases see in the in their cases separation acts like a wind you know when there is wind the fire grows you know more uh, more higher but our case our there is no fire our our uh, fire is like the light of the candle so the wind comes and our candle will blow off whatever little bit bhakti also is there will go off if we don't attend the temple programs if we don't associate with devotees if we don't take you know a separation does not increase our love it just makes us fall in maya but for the pure devotees it's on a different level so um, this is one thing also that you know mother sita was uh, you know in that vipralamba bhava and in, uh, you know all the more remembering lord ram so of course uh, these are so many different other reasons and also um the whole mahabharat uh, sorry the whole ramayan is um, on the theme of uh, selflessness we see how dasrath you know just to keep the word and just to keep the name of his dynasty very selflessly he sacrifices by sending lord ram to um, forest he could have say forget about what the people will talk about me in history i don't care kai kai to give you that promises i'm not going to send my son he didn't do that so and that was great sacrifice for him because he he was going to be separated from the love of his life of his little boy of his you know dear son so he acted selflessly and then we see lakshman acted selflessly by giving up his wife and family life to serve lord ram and then sita acts selflessly by um by um, you know giving up all the comforts at the palace and following her husband and then lord ram acts selflessly by you know um uh, sacrificing his uh, throne for bharat and just going in the forest and then bharat acts selflessly by um you know taking the footwear of lord ram and keeping them in the in the in the simhasan and you know as a as king and ruling as a servant of uh, lord ram and then shatrughna acts selflessly by serving bharata and then if you see the whole drama and everybody is acting selflessly 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 and and then this final past time where both lord ram and sita act selflessly by sacrificing each other's um, association because um one way Mother Sita is um, wife of Lord Ram, and yeah, she is hurt that she will be missing his association. But Mother Sita is also looking at it as a queen of Ayodhya, and as a queen of Ayodhya, she understands why Lord Ram has to take that decision, and she is okay about it. And how do we know that she is okay about it? What's the proof? Now I'll tell you. If you see this modern day separation cases, that divorce cases, where their parents have to do you no know, single parenting, the both husband and wife have separated, the child is either living with the mother or living with the father, and you will see when they are separated, the mother is poisoning the child so much about the father. Then the when the child grows up, he like hates his father. My father never did anything for me. My mother did, and the child who is with the father may be hating mother. Oh, my mother, she just left us, and my father took care of me. But you see, in the case of um, Love and Kush, they didn't have any hatred for Lord Ram. Mother Sita had, you know, trained them so nicely that they had such respect for their father. So it was not that Sita was resenting and, you know, getting angry on Lord Ram and telling Lord Kush, "This is what your father did to me." You know, I mean, your father needed to do it. You know, such a responsible position he has. Everybody is looking at him. The whole nation is looking at him, and he has to take certain decisions. So he was able to. Uh, she was able to understand what is Ram going through. So both were suffering silently, and both were selfless just for the benefit of the, you know, the citizens of Ayodhya. Yeah, she sacrificed as a queen of Ayodhya, and he sacrificed as a king of Ayodhya, and both were on a highest platform uh, for the welfare of the um, citizens. So, like that, you know, we see what is uh, this reason behind, you know, uh, Lord Ram doing this, you know, and um, sending Mother um, Sita uh, to the forest. Um, also, and you know, in our lives, also, if when we can't understand um, certain. things we should 
keep them in the big frame and you know try to understand them in a in a big frame uh, then we can have a uh, clear uh, picture like for example in our lives also sometimes we think i'm so nice i'm i never did anything bad to anybody i why did i get this kind of a reaction like like we see mother sita's life she never did anything wrong an obedient wife a chaste wife a sweet mother a perfect daughter in law why this happened because we should understand that you know it things are not that simple you know a is equal to b it's not like that a plus so many things plus so many things comes to b so it's not that simple and mother sita accepted it so gracefully and that's such a big lesson for us also when when apparently things happen in our life also in such a way where we see oh, what is this happening to me we should understand yes there may be because we are living you know multi life dimension you know multi life dimension we should understand you know what is happening is not only this life there is so many things uh, luggage we may be carrying for our pre- from our previous life and even if there is no luggage carried from previous life lord has his own plan which we can't understand you know lord has his own calculations and own mathematics so you know we should just um, uh, surrender and accept it So um that's it having said that I'll close it because I think I already spoke over time thank you so much and um it was um a uh, uh, nice to uh, share with you this uh, rama ayan in you know very brief of course I didn't do um justice to the topic because there's so much to say about mother sita but then um time is never on our side so uh, thank you so much I'll end it here सीताराम लक्ष्मण हनुमान जी की जय जगत गुरु श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू वॉट वी कैन डू इज ऑल दैट फोर फाइव क्वेश्चन कैन जस्ट हियर दैम ऑल एंड देन गिव वन वन आंसर फॉर एवरीबडीज क्वेश्चन लाइक अ जनरल आंसर lot of diverse questions okay so um during the menstrual cycle the women can go to the temple or not actually during that time there's lot of heat generated in the body and also physically the women need rest so it's better not to go to the temple and also you are not allowed to touch any auspicious articles you're not supposed to do uh parikrama to tulsi and then when you go to the temple definitely you associate with devotees and then they're all you know purely taken bath and then if you touch them then you know because then they also become um impure or rather then they cannot also do um parikrama of tulsi and they also cannot do the dd service because they've they've touched you so um logically it's good to just take rest that 3 4 days and that you know 4 5 days and just be happy because anyway you're physically strained so better to take rest and you know it's a good time you can read scriptures happily nowadays it's all there on geeta base android app just read in your phone or something read scriptures and chant more and just relax but at the same time in certain household uh, lives uh, there nobody to help so they'll have to cook and also you can't help then you have to do the cooking and you have to do it um i've heard diverse answers uh, from different uh, prabhupad disciple mataji's and some of them said that they can also cook and offer food to the home deities but um the vedic culture does not allow that so because we are a preaching mission we may do so many things but we don't put it in the altar you can just uh, cook and you know offer it you know from outside whatever it is and but you don't go and put it in the altar so you don't go near to the dd so these are also different aparads but you can definitely chant you can preach you can read scriptures so that's what you can do but better not to go to temple and if you have to go then you can go but you can stay far you can just uh, sit sit behind and make sure you don't mix with everybody or you don't go and stand in front of the altar or something like that you just maintain distance or stand in the back somewhere without disturbing and attend the classes or attend the bhajan kirtan aarti whatever you want to do uh, regarding other questions why didn't mother sita go to uh, her mother's house see once the once the um 
you know uh, the daughter is married then their family matter is their family matter so it's not like nowadays for every little thing you know what is that love at first sight and divorce at first fight and you know anything happens i'm just going to my mother's house thank you bye that it was not like that those days that you just walk off to your mother's house that's it you do what your husband ask you to do and she was you know being an ideal example that her, just like lord ram was an ideal example when um, dashrath maharaj asked him to go for exile he went for exile he could have also go and take a shelter of uh, you know sita mata's um, father and go and stay there in janakpuri you know but it is not like that whatever was asked to do that's what they did they did and ram was an ideal follower and when ram was banished he did that when sita was banished by ram then she did that whatever it was done so that's how it is so i think that was one question and i don't know that's all other questions i'm unable to remember so that's how it is of course um so many points so many things can be said so many other different stories are there connected to ramayana itself is like huge you know there are there's so many intertwined stories and then little little stories and then mother sita tells so many stories to lord ram that is one day i can take a, a separate class on that very interesting where how mother sita advises lord ram and then she tells so many different stories and analogies explaining why she wants ram to do this or ram to do that and there are lots of different nice conversations so yeah this is very very interesting yes that's it anything else shall we close it here krishna 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 lage sab Krishna 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 lage sab Krishna